Welcome to the Body Transformation Audio Seminar, Day 8, Basics of Diet. Hey, I'm so proud of you guys. You made it through the first week. But uh, before we get started, before we move forward, let's recap that first week a little bit. Day 1 was a brief introduction to the program. You're going to listen to a 5 to approximately 15 minute audio file every single day. You'll get a brief assignment most days that you'll have to email me or communicate in some way to me about. And again, I will respond to as many of those as often as you do this program uh, for a long time to come. Day two, we talked about setting goals and I had you set some goals for the next 28 days and on your uh, subsequent listens through to this program, uh, you're going to set more goals. Day three was what positive feelings do you want to experience from this journey? Day four is what negative feelings are you trying to get away from with this journey? Being mindful that we will do far more to get out of pain than we will ever do to experience pleasure because pain, avoiding pain is hardwired into our survival. Day five is all about how to use pain and pleasure to really make this journey easier. Day six was verbal and nonverbal body language to put yourself in peak emotional states. And seven covered the basics of anchors, how to set anchors, how to collapse anchors, what an anchor is, and uh, a brief uh, treatise about mortality and how coming to grips with the fact that someday you will die and this will all be gone, and this will all be over, is one of the most empowering beliefs that you can have. With that being said, let's get started on diet. First point though I want to address is every diet works. There is a uh, very muscular fit body preaching virtually every dietary approach, and we tend to get too hung up as people as far as which diet we should pick. Um, when I talk with individuals, uh, oftentimes before I do coaching or when I first start coaching a new client over the phone, typically the first thing they want to know about is uh, some exercise things that they can do. Second is diet. And lastly is mindset and motivation. And interestingly enough, that's kind of an inverted paradigm in terms of importance of how we really need to address this particular weight loss, muscle building, fitness journey that we are all going through. Mindset and emotions is far more important than dietary or exercise strategies. Diet is significantly more important than how often you train with weights or what type of cardio you're doing or how much cardio you do. And uh, the actual exercise portion really doesn't make that big of a difference one way or the other. Um, just to engage a, a simple thought experiment, let's assume just the average individual that maybe has, I don't know, six months of training time to a year of training time under his belt how much muscle could that particular individual, somewhat new to training, average genetics, how much muscle could that person build if they did everything perfect? 10 out of 10, I don't know, maybe five, 10 pounds of muscle. A 10, I think would be rather significant, but probably closer to five pounds of muscle in a whole year if they did everything perfect, 10 out of 10. Well, how much muscle would they build if you know they maybe only did everything, I don't know, five or six out of 10? Well, I mean, if it was half as important, let's just assume that they build half as much muscle. Is there a big difference in someone's physique if they build two and a half pounds of muscle over the course of a year versus five pounds of muscle? Not really. Building muscle takes time. And I do think uh, if you were to do everything correctly, you could reach your genetic potential uh, far faster than most individuals do. But the simple truth of the matter and relevant to this particular tape that we're listening to today is the longer you train, um, the less important your particular training strategies matter because so long as you're training and making some degree of progress, you're going to be continually approaching your genetic potential, your genetic limit. We can only get so big. We can only get so strong. So the longer you train, the less important some of these training strategies are. So I don't mean to be condescending when I say that, you know, high reps, low reps, high volume, low volume, training once a week, training six times a week, training every muscle group once a week, training every muscle group three times a week. It really doesn't matter that much. But we're going to address weight training later in the program. That's topic for next week. Every diet works. There is a fit body for every single approach. And we tend to get too hung up on which diet is most important. My general advice for most people, 
and some of you will disagree and that's fine. My general advice for the average individual that just wants to look better naked is pick the diet that is closest to the foods that you enjoy eating the majority of the time. Average individuals tend to eat only about the same 20 foods most of the time. So if I were to put someone on a diet that severely restricted some, or let's say maybe even a lot of those foods that they typically eat at some point, because it's been such a ingrained habit for years, maybe decades with some of these individuals, they're going to miss those foods and they're going to cheat on their diet and they're going to, um, it's going to throw a wrench in the gears and it's going to uh, flub a lot of things out for some of these individuals. And so many times as people, uh, we have a bad day. We quit our diet for the day. Sometimes we quit our diet for the week. I want to make sure people are committed to the long-term journey. And again, that's why we first started with mindset and emotions and goal setting. But in terms of your dietary success, you're better off most of the time, generally sticking to whatever diet most closely resembles the foods that you typically enjoy eating. Taking someone who really loves pasta and putting them on a ketogenic diet that doesn't let them have noodles is probably not going to work. And there are exceptions, so I can see that point, but probably not the best strategy for that particular individual for long-term success. Someone who really loves bacon and eggs probably has no problem dropping the toast. So you really have to um, be honest with yourself and what do you enjoy and what do you think could work? And another question to ask yourself is if you've lost some weight before with a particular program, you know, what has worked in the past? Why did it work? And why did you eventually give it up? And again, these are questions that I can help you guys with. If you need a little help talking some of this out, send me an email, fitcoachjerome at gmail.com. And I will help you through those. But realize that every diet works not because of what makes them different, but what makes them in common. And the thing that makes every diet in common is every diet works because they have some method of restricting food or increasing the quality of food that you eat. And by quality food, I just mean something as easy as blood sugar. If you tend to eat a lot of uh, very high glycemic sugars where it gives you a big blood sugar spike and then the insulin response happens and your blood sugar crashes, your energy is going to be all over the place. You might feel really good for an hour or so, and then you might get super tired, uh, you might feel a little bit out of it as your blood sugar plummets once the insulin kicks in. A lot of people have that two to three o'clock kind of lurch in their day where they're really down, they're tired post-lunch. It could be related to blood sugar. Uh, it could just be, you know, if you work in an office, you've been sitting for a couple of hours. But every diet works because they restrict food or they increase the quality of food that you eat. In terms of restricting food, I'm looking at things like uh, either counting calories, counting carbs, counting portions, um, counting points like Weight Watchers. Every diet has some method of restricting food intake. And because of that, every diet works. But what's the purpose of any diet? Well, first, the primary purpose of any diet is to provide enough calories and nutrition to help you sustain life. If you don't eat enough calories, you'll starve to death. And if you don't get enough of all the nutrients that you need, you'll have nutritional deficiencies that will manifest as some kind of ailment or disease or condition. That is uh, the primary purpose of any diet and a distant number two is to provide enough uh, nutrition and energy to improve your health or aesthetics. Um, health being how, you know, certain organs, certain bodily systems may function. Aesthetics being, you know, building muscle, losing fat. And third, it's to meet your needs for energy. So what dietary approach do you want to follow? Do you want to be a ketogenic, high fat, low carb diet, or do you like high carbs, low fat? Do you like the standard American diet and just want to find a way to make that more effective and more efficient? What diet do you want to follow for the next 28 days? Let me know. This is your assignment. Email me fitcoachjerome at gmail.com. Let me know what approach you're going to take to diet. It doesn't really matter. Pick something. Let me know which diet you'll follow and why. But let's say hypothetically, you don't really know what to do. <laughs> what do I recommend? Well, first, uh, if you don't mind tracking calories, I, I think that's the best way to approach that. So my general advice with people, if there's not a specific diet that they like or a plan that they already would like to follow is to eat whatever foods you want. Just limit your calories to 10 times your body weight. So if you're 200 pounds and you need to slim down a little bit, you know, limit your calories at 2000 calories a day. And eat whatever foods you want to eat, but don't go over that. It's like money in your bank account. 
if uh, if you spend more than you have, well, um, if your outcome or if your output exceeds your income, your upkeep will be your downfall. Is the old expression. Uh, limit your calories ten times your body weight and get an app like My Fitness Pal or a Chronometer, and they make it really really easy to uh, track food. Get something like a food scale if you need to. Um, point number two: try and get a minimum of one hundred grams of protein a day. And for most of us, uh, it's actually pretty easy. Um, but some people might be a little under that. Um, we'll talk about protein in two days, but you actually, you don't really need as much as you may think you do. And, uh, if you don't want to track anything, um, that's fine. Just realize that this journey may be a little bit more difficult. Uh, the more accurately you can track your food intake in terms of either calories or points or limiting fat, whatever approach you decide to follow, the more accurately you can track your food, uh, the easier this will be. Again, every single diet works because it either restricts the amount of food that you eat or it increases the quality of food and makes you feel a little bit better. But diet is significantly more important than exercise. Just for an example, uh, before we wrap this up, you could hop on a treadmill and you could jog a couple miles and burn 200 calories. And most individuals only burn about 60 to 80 calories uh, by jogging a mile. Or you could just eat 200 less calories. So for me, or I should say 200 fewer calories, excuse me, for me, I would rather eat less food than have to try and compensate for it by additional activity. The body over the uh, thousands and thousands of years that we have evolved has become very efficient in movement. We don't burn as many calories as we would like to think that we do uh, over the course of activity. My understanding is something along the lines of you need to perform approximately 20 sit-ups to burn one calorie. <laughs> And that I believe 70% of all the calories you burn in a day are not through activity. It's just through the function of uh, particular organs like the liver, the lungs, kidneys, and the brain. Um, burn the majority of the calories that we go through every single day just to, sustain, just to sustain life. Excuse me. So let's wrap this up. Pick a diet. Let me know what you're going to follow and why. And send me an email, fitcoachjerome at gmail.com. Let me know the approach, why you're taking that particular method. And uh, if you don't really know what to take, I recommend tracking calories. Uh, there are other ways to go about it. But for me, that's that's the best method. And if you need help beyond that because you don't want to track calories, shoot me an email, fitcoachjerome at gmail.com. I will give you a hand. We'll find a time either to have an email exchange or talk on the phone. But gentlemen, that is it for today. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you tomorrow.